Good morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think I've come to, to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be a scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Friends, this Sunday is an inside the family conversation. Jesus is speaking plainly, honestly, and shockingly, frankly, to most ears. Now, it may seem like Jesus just needs a Snickers, but it's much more than that. What he says does not fit the mold we may have of Jesus of Nazareth. He speaks of how his teachings will be confrontational and divisive. And we remember there were times when he overturned tables as well as welcoming children. Truth is often a hard pill to swallow. Sometimes our mental images are far more com comforting than reality, and our denial may let us slip back into our prejudices and bad habits. Friends, it's not where we really want to reside. Who wants to live in a lie? So let's unpack what Jesus said. We often forget that Jesus was murdered for political reasons. His teachings were dangerous and he needed to be silenced and his divisive movement must be quelled by the religious leaders that were and the precarious balance of power they shared with the Romans who were occupying their state. To keep what little they had, they had to pay an expensive price. What's the life of one man, they thought, to maintain the way things are? To the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious congress that tried him, obviously this was worth it. And Jesus' prediction came true. His message, if we really do what he calls us to do in the gospel, not to think what it says, but what it truly says, is as shattering to the status quo today as it was then. Despite our current debates to the contrary, there is right and wrong, there is good and bad, and there is evil in this world out to undo the kingdom of God. Every single one of us, not just the clergy or the super religious amongst us, have the responsibility to discern. We all must do the work of discernment, listening to the prompting of the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Think of it, think of it like Jiminy Cricket if you have to, or that still small voice while the world is in uproar. But each and every one of us are given the opportunity every day to choose this day whom we will serve. We're given the opportunity to choose the right and turn away from the wrong, the high road or the low road. We all choose our path. Now in the early church, in their baptismal practices before infants and children were baptized, the new initiates, grown adults, would gather in the pre-dawn hours beside a stream or river of flowing water. And they would get into the chilly waters, and as the sun cracked over the horizon, they would turn and renounce the darkness, and then turn back and embrace the light. Then they would be baptized into Christ, claiming and residing in Christ in a lifelong commitment. Some of that language remains in our baptismal promises. Even today, in countries where Christianity is not the norm or predominant, many are fine if their relatives are curious and attend a Bible study or even a church service. But if the people are baptized, they understand that this is serious, a game changer. They understand the words of Jesus, that there will be division, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, 
mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Somewhere along the way, we have, followed, we have allowed our faith to become cultural. And I've seen images where people have drawn Jesus with American flags or even worse, with a gun. Nothing, nothing could be further from the Jesus of Scripture than images like these. Like the Hebrew prophets of old, Jesus knew that things were not as God would have them. Like Isaiah called out the hypocrisy of those who considered themselves righteous in Isaiah 5, just a little bit further down from today's reading, Isaiah said this, Woe to those who drag iniquity along with cords of falsehood, who drag sin along as with cart ropes, who say, let him make haste, let him speed his work that we may see it. Let the plan of the Holy One of Israel hasten to fulfillment that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes in drinking wine and valiant at mixing drink, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of their rights. Jesus came to promote the kingdom of God, nothing else, not Judaism, not the empire, not the emperor, not the right to bear your sword. Jesus came to reframe our world and to have us step into the reality of the kingdom of God, a place of grace, a place where all are welcome, no matter what has come before, a place divided from the way things are in this world. Jesus knew that his way of thinking and living and this message would drive a wedge into hearts and minds and our society itself. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided. The way I read this is not that Jesus wants division, far from it, but he wants the kingdom so badly that he knows the outcome. Don't put the cart before the horse. The horse is the kingdom of God and the cart that follows is division. Treating people in love and grace goes against the power structures that were and are still today. The hard truth that Jesus says here in Luke is not past tense. It's as true today as when he said it. For so many outside the church, they can almost see the divisions and the hypocrisy better than we can. When people claiming to follow Christ talk about needing jet airplanes or fancy cars or luxury items, it is disgraceful. While I was traveling recently, it made the news all the way over in England where we were, were about the preacher in New York who was doing an online service and was robbed at gunpoint for a million to a million and a half dollars in jewelry that he and his wife were wearing. Not supposedly, now supposedly these two people were followers of Jesus who only had the robe on his back when he died. And even that was taken and gambled over by the soldiers at the foot of the cross. Surprisingly enough, when we landed at Dulles, the custom officials who welcomed us back into the country asked if I had heard about it while I was in England. He brought it up when, I found, when he found out I was a priest. He then mentioned that his uncle was the NYPD detective on the case. And I told him that I would pray for his uncle, and I have. I also encouraged him to have his uncle look into the minister who had a million plus in jewelry. <laughs> that sounds more shady to me than the robbery itself. Friends, we preach a message of love and sacrifice, of life change and eternal reward, of turning the other cheek and generosity, of humility and prayer, power and privilege and prejudice, are not choices we can make when we are truly following Christ. And none of us, not a one of us, especially me, gets it right on this side of heaven. There are and there will be logs in our own eyes, as Jesus called them, as we slowly attempt the conversion of our hearts on our road to heaven. That's why we gather for encouragement and strength, for correction and confrontation, for reconciliation and absolution, 
and are divided into this path into the kingdom of God Christ brought about. There are, we, there are many shoulders of the faithful that we are standing upon, and the world is slowly shifting to that final day when all shall be revealed and the kingdom will come in its fullness. That's why the preacher in Hebrews can encourage and strengthen us with their admonition. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Now Ashland, our town here, is a train town. And an old standard that was actually a hit again in my teenage years echoed through my brain this week, preparing for today. People get ready. There's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage, just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. Don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. So much truth there. I need to let go of the baggage of this world and get on board with Jesus. Do I have the faith to do so, or will I let it go by? Ponder that, friends. Jesus' promises confront and welcome us still. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for being with us this week. God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon.